Mythical Pokemon are super mysterious, rare, and fascinating Pokemon that each Pokemon region really only has a couple of, if they're lucky. But what if every region got a new Mythical Pokemon, in like a Legends game, or a remake, or something like that? What would they be like? Well, we're gonna begin to explore that idea in today's video, as I have created some new mythicals for the Kanto, Johto, and Hoenn regions that show what that could be like. I also plan on covering all of the other regions as well in future videos if this one does well, so be sure to like this one and leave a comment so we can make that happen. And with that said, let's get into it. While today's Pokemon are definitely mythical, so too is today's amazing sponsor, Manscaped. Their products definitely have that mythical quality to them, as I use them every day and can personally attest to their quality. Their base stat total is easily 700, if not more. I particularly love their body wash, and while I don't exactly keep a ranking of all the body washes I've ever used in my life, this one might just be at the very top. What makes it even better though, is that Manscaped includes this body wash in their buff bundle. This bundle consists of the body wash, as well as Manscaped's signature body buffer. The body buffer is an antibacterial silicone scrubber that is designed to get you the maximum amount of clean, because if you're just scrubbing with your hands, you may not be getting all of the bacteria and oil out of your skin that you could be and loofahs and washcloths can be super nasty and can actually collect bacteria rather than removing it from you. Basically, the body buffer just helps you to get the cleanest clean that you can be, and who doesn't want that? You can pick up the buff bundle which comes with the body buffer and two bottles of body wash by clicking the link in the description below. And when you use code HOOPSVGM at checkout, you'll also get 20% off free shipping, and it helps to support the channel too. So it is a mega evolution sized win. So be sure to check that out with the link below, and a big thank you to Manscaped for supporting the channel. Okay, let's begin in Kanto and take a look at what the original Pokemon region could look like with a brand new mythical. This is Archeon, and it is what I imagine a new mythical in the Kanto region could be like. Now, when it comes to mythicals, their background and lore is everything, or at least that's how it should be. So in addition to the Pokemon, I've also come up with a scenario as to how these Pokemon could appear in these regions. For Archeon, I imagine that it could be brought to Kanto by Bill, who is a Pokemon collector, and it would be kept in his garden, which would be a nod to all of those crazy rumors from back in the day that said that Bill had a secret garden full of legendary Pokemon. I imagine Archeon could be obtained by catching wind that Bill is caring for a secret Pokemon at his cottage on the Cerulean Cape, and when you go to ask him about it, he reveals that he found a mythical Pokemon named Archeon, which hails from a distant land, and is currently caring for and researching it. When you ask if you can see Archeon for yourself, Bill obliges, but with one condition. You must bring him the mythical Pokemon Mew so that he can see it for himself, since that is the one Pokemon that has eluded him to this point. After catching Mew with the help of some kind of event, you'd bring it back to Bill and he would then lead you into his secret garden where Archeon awaits, and will even offer you the chance to catch it as he says that he's completed his research on it. That is just the background side of this Pokemon though, so now let's get into some of its personal details. First off, Archeon is a dark type because there is not a single dark type Pokemon in the Kanto region decks, and I think this would be a really cool way to add one. Since it is also a mythical Pokemon as well, and the only other mythical in Kanto is Mew, I thought it would be cool if Archeon was sort of a pseudo-Mew counterpart, 
which is why Mew is involved in the quest to catch it. This also influenced its design as well. For example, since Mew is vaguely based on the appearance of a cat, I wanted to vaguely base Archeon on the appearance of a dog. This cat similarity is also partially where the name Mew comes from, as that's a sound that cats make, so the name Archeon comes from the sounds that dogs make. Arc comes from bark, and Kion comes from Kion Kion, which is a Japanese onomatopoeia for the sound of a dog barking. The artwork for Archeon, as well as all of the other mythicals that appear in this video, was also drawn by my good friend Oscar Belmonte, and you guys should know him by now, but if you don't, be sure to check him out with the links in the description. Let's go ahead and move on to Johto, though, and for Johto, I've got the mythical and mysterious Hibaguma. Now, this guy probably looks a little bit creepy, but he's supposed to be that way. The background for this mon is that it would be located on Mount Silver, and is heavily based on real-life cryptids like Bigfoot, the Chupacabra, etc. First, while Mount Silver does have red that you can encounter there, it is somewhat surprising that it's not the signature location of some kind of legendary Pokemon as well, as it's such an iconic and daunting area. Secondly, given the fact that it is a huge mountain wilderness area, it would serve as the perfect setting for a cryptid Pokemon, one that hides somewhere within the vast landscape of Mount Silver, but no one has ever caught more than a glimpse of it while hiking the mountain's face, and even the strongest of trainers can't say that they've been able to encounter it in a proper battle. There would be widespread rumors circulating about Hibaguma in areas that are somewhat close to Mount Silver, such as Victory Road, or even Viridian City in Kanto, or Cherry Grove City in Johto. In order to be able to find Hibaguma for yourself, you would have to talk to the people in these areas and piece together all of the different rumors that they have heard, and ultimately, you would be able to find it somewhere on Mount Silver, but at a different location and at a different time each day. So for example, on Monday it could be hiding in one of Mount Silver's caves from 5 to 6 p.m., but on Tuesday it might be towards the top of the mountain in the morning, and so on. Considering Mount Silver is not only iconic, but is such a sprawling location too, I think it would make for the perfect setting for something like this, and having rumors like these that we often hear about Pokemon in real life and whether or not they're real, but have it be in the game about an actual Pokemon would be super cool in my opinion. Additionally, while legendary and mythical Pokemon are essentially the Pokemon world's equivalent of cryptids, they're more so treated like gods and deities most of the time than a sort of Bigfoot-like figure. So it would be cool to have a mythical like this that is fully inspired by that cryptid persona. This heavy cryptid inspiration is also where Hibaguma's appearance comes from, as it's meant to have that kind of alien, lizard-like figure that would be reported in a creature such as this. And as you may have guessed, this is also where its name comes from too, as Hibaguma comes from Hibagon, which is Japan's equivalent to Bigfoot, and even though it doesn't really resemble Bigfoot, I thought that having some Japanese inspiration in a Japanese region like Johto made sense. And Bigfoot is also the most iconic of all the modern day cryptids, so I thought it helped to really bring the concept full circle. Following that though, the Uma part of its name actually has a double meaning, as it comes from Uma, which is an acronym meaning Unidentified Mysterious Animal, which refers to Bigfoot-like creatures and is what Hibaguma is. And it also comes from Uma, which is a genus of lizards, and it itself is somewhat lizard-like. Also, the name Hibaguma just sounds like it could be the name of something like this in real life, so I'm pretty proud of how that came together. Finally, its typing is Dark Steel. 
This is meant to represent the two types that were introduced in the Johto games, and I think it would be cool to see both of those on a Johto Pokemon, with the Steel type in particular coming into play thanks to its long claws and sharp spines that run down its back and are on its head, as they are said to be sharper and harder than any kind of metal known to man. Alright, so in addition to mythicals for Kanto, Johto, and Hoenn, I've actually got a bonus one for you guys as well. The region this mythical comes from is, well, my own region. It's Fulkachi from my very own monster catching video game that I am currently working on, Histrobi Chronicles. A lot of cool design elements went into this little guy that I haven't really got to touch on yet, so I figured I would throw him in here really quick as a bonus since he's basically a mythical himself. And hey, if you haven't checked out my Histrobi Chronicles project just yet, consider doing so with the card on screen or by going to my channel. Like I said, it's an actual game that I am making, and any support is greatly appreciated. When it comes to Fulkachi though, this little guy is the mascot of Histrobi Chronicles, and he features in a Wild West themed region known as Westild. Appearance wise, he's based on a fox, since I wanted to follow in the footsteps of Pikachu and create a mascot that could be both cute and cool for maximum appeal, and I thought a fox fit the bill. Fulkachi is also red and white in color as a nod to my previous Fakemon series, Pokemon Cardinal, as Histrobi Chronicles is basically the successor to that. You may have also noticed that Fulkachi has an hourglass-like pattern on its body as well, and that is because Fulkachi is very much themed around time travel. You see, the Westild region that features in my game, Histrobi Chronicles, is set in a Wild West-like time period, and is very much themed around that particular point in time. As such, the concept of time is a major focus in this game, and as not only the mascot of the game, but the central Histrobi that the plot revolves around and that everyone is trying to find, Fulkachi also has some time-related elements going on with both its design as well as its abilities too. In fact, it even has a type, or attribute as I'm calling it, that no other Histrobi has, so there is a lot of mystique going on with this little guy that you'll be able to learn as you play the game, and I cannot wait to get more into it, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and get caught up on all of the Histrobi trailers if you want to learn more. Finally, the name Fulkachi is pretty neat too, as it comes from Fox, Folk as in Folk Tale, the kind that describe mystical creatures such as Fulkachi, and the Japanese onomatopoeia Kachi Kachi. This is an onomatopoeia that is essentially equivalent to the tick tock of a clock in English, once again alluding to its time travel inspirations. But it's also a very subtle nod to Pikachu as well, since Pikachu is the mascot of Pokemon just like Fulkachi is for his Trophy Chronicles, and Pikachu is named after some Japanese onomatopoeias as well. I thought that this would be a nice tip of the cap to Pokemon, since Histrobi Chronicles is also a monster catching game as well, and that pretty much describes Fulkachi for ya, or at least what I can say about it to this point. So thanks for indulging me and letting me talk about him for a little bit, and like I said, stay tuned for more Histrobi Chronicles content in the future. And now, let's go ahead and take a look at Hoenn's new mythical Pokemon. If Hoenn was ever going to get a new mythical Pokemon, this is what it could possibly look like. This is Bruizen, and its whole deal is that it is an attempt to make use of one of Hoenn's most underused and overlooked locations. Shoal Cave is a place in Hoenn next to Moss Deep City that is basically just there so that the couple of ice types in Hoenn have a place to exist, and it has basically zero importance outside of that. It's a completely optional location to go to, and really nothing special happens there at all. 
which is why I thought it would be an ideal location to feature a mythical Pokemon. The scenario could be that after you beat the game and calm Groudon and Kyogre, you begin to hear reports that it's snowing in Moss Deep City. This is completely unheard of for Moss Deep, let alone anywhere else in Hoenn, so you head over there with Steven Stone to investigate since Moss Deep is where Steven lives. Steven then tells you that he suspects that this is the work of a Pokemon named Bruisen. He says that there are stories that this Pokemon lives deep within Shoal Cave, and that it is said to have the power to lower the surrounding temperature to sub-zero levels. However, Steven says that Bruisen is said to live so deep within Shoal Cave that virtually no one has ever seen this Pokemon for themselves. As the newly crowned champion though, Steven entrusts you with the task of going to Shoal Cave to investigate, and to stop Bruisen from freezing over Moss Deep. Otherwise, the entire Hoenn region may become frozen as well before you know it. So, Bruisen was designed not only to make more use of Shoal Cave, but also as sort of an unofficial extension of the Weather Trio, with its ability to drop the temperature of everything around it, and in particular, the weather. These are the reasons why it is also an ice type, and is also why it is based on what it is based on as well. Since Groudon and Kyogre are basically a superpowered lizard and superpowered killer whale, respectively, I wanted to follow the same motif with Bruisen, which is why it is a superpowered bear. More specifically, however, it is a cave bear, which is an extinct species of bear that primarily lived in caves, as the name would suggest, in the same way that Bruisen inhabits the Shoal Cave. Finally, the name Bruisen comes from Bruin, which is another word for bear, Bruiser and Bruisen since it has that brute dish type of appearance, and Frozen because of its ice typing. And that is what it could be like if Kanto, Johto, and Hoenn got new mythical Pokemon. Now, I definitely plan on doing the other regions as well, like I said, so be sure to subscribe for that, but I also need your help to make that happen. So leave this video a like if you enjoyed it, and let me know your thoughts with a comment, because it really helps the video out. With that said, I'll be back with another new video very soon, and until then, as always, thank you guys for watching this one, I really appreciate it, and I will smell you guys later.